Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. This morning's call to worship comes from John 14. Come now and see for yourselves. God is alive and in our midst and begins life anew even among us. You will see the very nature of God and those gathered around you. Get ready to stand firm, to stand on the rock that is Jesus Christ. From there, we will feel the confidence of those who follow the way, the truth, and the life. Welcome. Let us pray. O oh God of creation, become for us once again the solid foundation upon which we build our daily lives. We gather before you this first day of the week to align our lives with the teaching of the life of Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. Receive our praise and thanksgiving as expressions of faith and love. We welcome to you, O oh Lord, as people who, or we come to you, O oh Lord, as people who desire to learn and serve like Christ. We are ready to receive your blessing and direction today. Let us continue in prayer as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's first hymn is hymn number 612, In This Very Room. Please stand if you're able. A strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. 
and into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. We are better together. When we join in music or mission or ministry or fellowship, we discover that God makes us better, being built upon one another like living stones in the house of the Lord. We have this common faith and this common calling to be in ministry together. Would the usher please come forward to receive this morning's gifts?
reading is from Acts um, chapter 7, 54 through 60. And I am reading from the New International Version. This is the stoning of Stephen. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Lesson this morning's reading. Our next hymn is hymn number 635, In the Garden. <laughs> be troubled. You believe in God. Also, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going to there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. 
you may, or you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can you say we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been with you uh, for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing and will do even greater things be than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. May God add blessing uh, to this reading of his word. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just ask that uh, we might recall uh, as we contemplate the scriptures and the songs that we're singing today, the, the very here I am moments or the in the garden moments, the communion that we have with you, the fellowship that we have, that you indeed speak to us and desire to speak so plainly that we receive your comfort and your presence. We pray that uh, as we meditate on these things, that that might be the outcome, that we might walk uh, more in tune and devotion to you. And uh, we just ask for that, that you might be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I wanted to uh, con consider with you, as I say, this uh, concept of, of just the devotion that we have, the hearing from God, you know, often we read his word and we're looking, we can look at it historically and say, hey, what has happened historically with this word? Or, excuse me, I'll just get the hymnal. Or, or we, might, uh, we might as well, uh, you know, say, how do we know God, not just about him? How do we hear from him? He speaks to us through our conscience, and we all know that uh, we can have a guilty conscience, and it's not something we can live with long before we decide, I'm going to do something about that guilty conscience, or uh, before we decide, I'm just not going to believe those things, so I don't have to have guilt anymore. They said that we, uh, conscience is with knowledge when your behavior aligns with your belief, you have a clear conscience. When your behavior and your belief don't align, you either change your behavior or you change your belief one way or another because we cannot continue uh, with that kind of uh, guilt or guilty conscience. It's just something that uh, we don't do as human beings. But but God will speak to us and he'll, he'll uh, maybe affirm things in our mind. Uh, it's, it's rather rare that uh, you look through scripture. It's not the norm that God you know, breaks through from heaven and has a voice from heaven, but he does speak to his people consistently through scripture. Uh, if you hear the voices from heaven, you might might be visiting my wife uh, soon. Uh, but, but when I have the hearing in that manner uh, as the norm, if that's the norm, there's something uh, that's not consistent with scripture. But there is a sense in which God speaks through our thoughts, our minds, our dreams, and, and in many other ways. And we look for, was that God speaking? I need some confirmation. And so we, we look to see that. We don't get any emails, right? How many times if you want to text from God and he's not texting? It's like maybe our, sh our children should stop texting and we should stop texting, but uh, we should learn some other communication style that's consistent with the hearing the heart of God. Well, there's a uh, missionary, her name is uh, Dr. Heidi Baker, 
And she serves, uh, since 1980, she served in Africa. And so that's, you know, 43 years of, of mission work. And excuse me. She, she had uh, told a story that um, she was off to a meeting. She was going late to a meeting. And, uh, and as she was traveling to go, there was a Bible study that she was leading, and a lot of people were there. And uh, while she was on her way to this meeting, she felt like God said, take time for the one. And she said, now, ashamedly, I, I, looked at, I pulled my, my, my hand up to look at my watch. It's like, God, don't you know I'm late? <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's almost like the story of, of the Good Samaritan Right? The religious people were busy and they looked at their watches and they moved on. And so very much in that same tone, she's like, I was like, okay, I will look. I will take time for the one. And she looks over and sees a woman, and this is in Mozambique, so I'm, I know what hot is because I went to New Orleans one time and it was like shade was of the highest value. And, and I remember paying probably too much money for a hat just to get the sun off of my head. And I, I can't imagine what it would be like in the heat of the sun in Mozambique, but it was miserable. And so this lady was sitting in the sun, which nobody does, and she walked up to her and um, she said that uh, as she came upon her, she said, what, what's your name? And she's, she's kind of a, a hand-holding, touchy kind of person, and she wanted to embrace her and hold her hand. What's your name? And the woman said, I don't have a name. And her eyes were white, and uh, it had been white all over, so had been covered with uh, something from birth. And she asked somebody else, what, what's her name? And they said, well, she doesn't have a name because she was born blind at birth and her mother didn't give her a name. It's like you only name what you think is going to live or what you're going to own. And she just thought that was uh, terrible that this woman did not have a name. It wasn't consistent with the way that God looks at us. And she gave her a name and, and the name meant joy. You exist and joy. And it was a name that that she had given her, and she told other people, say, hey, this, is, this is what her name, Utalia, Utalia. She said, this is Utalia, and she introduced, and other people said her name, and this woman was just, like, filled with joy. And, uh, and so they talked a little, and um, while they were talking, she said, I didn't pray or anything, but while they were talking, God changed her eyes, and, and the white went away, and she got you could see her pupils and, and the iris again, and this woman's vision was healed because she was willing to get on God's timing and not just on her own timing, and God did this miraculous work, and she said, it wasn't really anything that I was thinking about. All that I had in my heart was compassion toward this woman, and God said, I needed to go see her. It's like, it's really an incredible thing. Sometimes we hear those stories from the mission field of, from our missionaries where God is establishing his work. There are, just like when Jesus came, he used the miraculous to establish his work. Often on the mission field, there are some stories that we come across where God does something spectacular to say, I am here, I see this person, and I'm establishing my work here. I want people to know that there's a living God in heaven who, who is here. And, and so I actually looked up uh, on, uh, on the internet. I was like, I wonder what kind of uh, you know, story, because I heard stories so many times from our ABC missionaries that something spectacular had happened. And uh, I used to be in, in Aptopad, which was ABC of Pennsylvania and Delaware. And, uh, and in their website, they had talked about some churches that were hosting what they called healing rooms, and just to give the sense of the presence of God in that place. 
And they said that there had been, and this is, this is from their website, from Mavco Pet. They said, for the past month, a gentleman was coming for prayer for healing rooms for multiple reasons. He was excited to see how God was working in his life. Healing had not come instantaneously, like with this woman, but there has been a presence of God and in the midst of that and his faith was growing in the process, they said um, that, that God was uh, working through things in his life and, and just showing up that God was there. And there was, I don't know where Middletown Baptist is in Abcopat, I don't know if that's Delaware or Pennsylvania or what, but it's not our Middletown here. And there was a lady in the congregation that told a coworker about the healing rooms, invited him to come for, for uh just to enjoy God's presence. He had a rare blood disease in which he had to have a transfusion weekly. And he gave his testimony in that church. And he said, I got news at the doctor's again on Wednesday. I didn't need a blood transfusion for the fourth straight week since coming. Praise God. I guess this prayer stuff really works. <laughs> and, and I thought, you know, how sweet that was. And, um, you know, sometimes as we uh, listen, it takes some courage to listen and say, well, is this, well, this isn't what is normal to us. It's, it's not what's natural, it's supernatural, but yet uh, do we want to discount the place of God in our life? And so we want to be open to the things that God would have to do. There's also a story uh, that was told from an ABC uh, mission church in India, and, and they uh, named a number of things in which God was doing some work. Uh, sometimes uh, there had been changes in weather as a result that they thought was a result of their, their prayers. Other times there had been uh, some physical things going on. Um, they said one man was having severe chest pain and they called together the leaders of the church and ministered to him and instantly God took in, in answer to their prayer, the chest pain was gone, and uh, and they just praised God for that. Uh, they said that there was a, you know, some discussion about what to do with uh, so many orphan children there, and there were answers that were coming forth as God sends wisdom, and they were just thanking God for wisdom for and provision for what do we do with this. There was another uh, brother uh, who had back pain for six months. He couldn't bend over due to severe pain. And, uh, and he was relieved of his pain and, and mobility was restored. And this, like I said, this is from our ABC mission in India. And, and they named a, a number, uh, well, another one that was a sister. I wouldn't know how to pronounce this, but it's a B-H-I-B-A-T-I. So we're going to say Bhavati uh, was suffering from burning in her entire body. She had a problem eating food because of gastritis and, uh, and those, those answers that they had prayed for had come. And, and she was uh, finding that the Lord was doing some work. And so, uh, so I would say, you know, it's, it's been interesting to see, I feel like the prison is a similar mission post like, um, like a mission field where God establishes his work. And, um, you know, we have had some incredible numbers of people coming to chapel. Uh, and I, I told Janie, I said, well, you know, we're almost at standing room only in our chapel. It's a prison uh, because God is present and people hear his wisdom. They feel the call to prayer and uh, the need for that. And, and we're getting some answers in prayer. And, you know, often I'll stand in the back, like last week, it's like, okay, there's a seat over here. You know, there's a seat over here. You know, and uh, one time I saw 10 people standing in the back. I was like, really, if you get this one guy to move, you can sit in there. And, uh, and so it's, it's incredible to see God moving in that way. Um, last Sunday night, we had a worship time, and I said, why don't we, to the volunteers that came in, I said, often we will pray before the service, 
And so we gather a prayer in another room. I was like, why don't we pick a prayer in the sanctuary it's rather than these guys sit there and wait for us to start. And, uh, and, and so we went in and it, it just seemed to change the dynamic in the service. And so while we were worshiping, singing some worship songs, um, there was a man that was sitting kind of behind me, and I noticed he was trying to get my attention. I was sitting in the front row, and he he was, I, I saw he was emotionally moved, and he's like, chapel, and I never saw this guy before. He was one of the, I counted 35 new people that I had not seen before in service. 35 new people. And, uh, and he said, Chaplain, I need to get my life right with God. I want to know how to be saved. And and right there, um, I, I called a few people over and I said, Why don't we pray about this right now? Lots, you know, somebody else was on the platform and we did that. Somebody else uh, was having a lot of problems. They had MS and they had this flare up and they asked for some prayer. And I said, Okay, well, why don't we pray for this too? It's like, Anyway, there's stuff on a platform, and then there's this other stuff going on, and it's like, God, I don't know where you are in the midst of this, but we're going to try to respect what the needs are. And so we prayed for this guy, and before the speaker got up, all of his pain was gone. And people had observed him, and it was like he was, you could see his his limbs moving, and he was in a lot of pain, and uh, he had a, a lot with that. And later this week, he came back for a prayer meeting, and he said, I've, I've been so relieved of pain, and I'm just thanking God for for what He was doing. And um, and so I'm going to read uh, from First Corinthians 12, um, you know, where the Lord tells us that that He is uh, giving us giving different gifts, but the same Spirit. Uh, and verse 4, he said, different kinds of ministries, but the same Lord, different kinds of working, but the same God works all things and all people. Not each one a, manifest a manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. There is, or to one there is given a spirit of a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, gifts and healings, etc., and uh, miracles or prophecy, and he goes on and say, all of these are works of the one and same Spirit who gives them out just as he determines. And so the Lord is, is doing that work. And so it's really nothing about us. And um, I just say, uh, you know, there's one other thing I just wanted to kind of ask you is like, I know that uh, a number of you have talked about where you felt that God spoke to you in your life about something you got a conviction about something you should do or not do, or, you know, maybe there's been a word that you give to somebody and, um, different times God has uh, given me dreams or something. Not that many times, but you know, there, are, you know, over the years, I love the number of decades. So, you know, over the, over the decades, I might get a dream and God spoke to me through a dream or something and uh it's not like an every week every night every month or whatever thing but you know there's sometimes and uh and sometimes over the years he's he's given me some kind of image and i was like is is this god is this you know i don't know and so wednesday night um i i got this image and uh this conviction that was for somebody it was an image of steps and it was steps up and and i just kind of said i think this is for somebody here and i don't really know who but i uh, i believe that somebody and i just had this compelling conviction that i needed to share this it's like well if it at least i was True to it, if God told me to share it, and I shared it, or I thought that God told me to share it, I shared it, you know. And so I said, I think that somebody here is supposed to take some steps, and it's not easy. It's a step up, but it's going to be to another level in your life of the way that God wants you to live and grow in your obedience to him. And, uh, and so we, 
you know, we just kind of went on and I shared some things and prayer and we um, just prayed. And so afterwards, somebody came up to me and this is what he said. He said, Chaplain, that, that word was for me. And he said, I was, and he had transferred in a couple months ago. And he wasn't really in, in chapel for months. And he walks with a cane and he has difficulty walking. And he said, I saw on the schedule that we were doing intercessory prayer. And he said, this is what the Lord said to me that I heard from the Lord in my bunk. You need to take the next step. I brought you here to grow in your faith and you need to go down to intercessory prayer. You need to make the effort and do this because I'm going to, I'm going to build up your life with the people that are in your life. Very similar to the thing that I heard. And it's like, okay, maybe that was God speaking to this guy is a very similar thing coming. And I always look for, is there some confirmation? Of that, just as like if you say, I think Bessie had a word about the house that she moved into, right? When you bought your house, that that was your house to, to buy, that the Lord had given it over to you. And and there there are you know times that we make decisions in life or at this juncture where we need to hear from God. Often we want to look for some confirmation. And I shared that story with somebody else and one of the guys said when you said that this guy's face came into my mind the guy so he didn't know anything about that but he's like i think that was for this guy and i don't know what's beyond it i don't know it's just kind of interesting i will say to walk with god like in the garden or to say god here i am i'm going to speak the things that i hear you speaking and we're going to look for is that for for me? Is that for someone else? Uh, what did you say? When when I was uh, in transition at one point um, in life, I went to a church and somebody prayed for me, the pastor uh, said I was going from pastoring and I didn't know what direction I was going next to serve the Lord. And, and the pastor said, well, I'll pray for you. And he said, well, I got this image. You're in a white church and you're in the hospital, and, uh, and I was like, I'm, that doesn't mean anything to me. He said, well, maybe it's indigestion, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but interestingly, when I looked back later, and I go to another church, and somebody later invited me, a chaplain from Good Samaritan Hospital, and I became a chaplain at Good Samaritan Hospital, and often wore a white shirt, and I thought back on this, gentleman who said I saw you and he saw me at Good Samaritan Hospital on top of that and so I was like you know so, some of the words that we have are reminders that God has been with us all along that God has been with us some of them are encouragement to take the step some of those are confirmation and I uh, like this gentleman sitting at his bunk that was not involved in the chapel. The confirmation, God said, go down to the chapel. I'm going to grow your faith. And then he came down to the chapel and he heard basically the same thing spoken out of my mouth, but it was, it was still God confirming. I want you to take this seriously and follow me. And so, uh, so I had uh, you know, witnessed as a volunteer came forth, there were a number of things that he spoke to guys that were getting prayed for, and they kept coming to me and they said, what, what he spoke to me, this is the very discussion that we've been having for three weeks, and the things, the issues that we needed some resolution on, that God was coming to speak in that way. And uh, I, th I really think that my mother heard a lot in uh, her devotion with God, uh, just encouragement, words, and I think that she heard a lot in uh, just the comfort and love that God had for her in the, uh, you know, I come to the garden alone, and she just had that devotional time, and uh, I think that we're in this uh, state where, you know, we are hearing opportunities and blessings 
that this church has. We say, what are those opportunities? God has not forgotten us. He is with us. And he will confirm those opportunities for the hope and the future that he has for us. Those plans are going to come forth. And, and my encouragement is, just as we do this, to know he is with us. He speaks to us. Sometimes it comes in different forms, some confirmations of things that we look for. But to know that God is still speaking and, and he is every bit as concerned about us as he was when the church was founded. So, and there were probably many things that they thought, okay, this is what we're hearing. We're hearing plant this church in this area. The same God leads in the, okay, in the next steps of what he has for this congregation. And so we need to listen with the same intensity that was had when the church originally was founded and said, uh, we're going to do this uh, kids program and bring Linda in. And, uh, right, <laughs> this is what happened, right? And uh, we're going to do these outreaches and we're going to bring people in. God will still speak and confirm through his speaking, through others hearing, and in, in many ways he will say, I am still with you. I'm still God. I still love you. And I'm going to walk with you through these next steps. Father, uh, we just thank you. We thank you that you are God who leads us. There's a mystery about it because it's not like a black and white letter that we get from you. But uh, we do get uh, your word. We get uh, the purposes that you have set for us. We get the fellowship of other believers to hear along with us. And so it's a joint process that we come together as a community of listeners so that we might accomplish your will here on earth just as it is in heaven. So you will accomplish your will and your purpose here. And so we, we pray that uh, you will guide uh, this body in ways that are affirming and encouraging because that is the kind of God that you are. You are a good God all of the time. And so we ask you to lead us individually and corporately. So lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. It's our prayer and it's our song that we'll sing. 689, Lead Me, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon this uh, bread for which we are about to partake, symbolizing the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life on the cross for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.
on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And we'll have prayer for the cup. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on Calvary. The cup they were about to partake from symbolized the bread or the, the blood that you have shed, that washed our sins away as white as snow, with your last breath, saying, it is finished. Amen. <laughs> supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me let us drink together Paul said whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes and so we we proclaim that together and uh, let us keep in mind the body of believers, the body of Christ, that we should not come in an unprepared state, but that we uh, recognize ourselves and one another before the Lord. And let's sing, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, with long lips. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may we go in God's peace and blessing, enjoying the fellowship of this gathering. Amen.